Hello, everyone. Thank you, Sesame. Um, this will probably be a short video. I haven't made one in a while. Uh, there was one question in particular that I've been thinking about just because it relates to a workshop I did on vertical progression recently. Um, so this is a question from Babo Bumbo blog. Uh, Babo Bumbo blog? Sorry. Uh, hi, Josh. I've recently, recently been playing a wide variety of Western RPGs, Oblivion, Morrowind, 40K Rogue Trader, Baldur's Gate 3. I would consider myself a pretty experienced video game RPG player, and in all these games, I kept running into the question of, at what number does the stat become good? <laughs> Mostly in consideration for the late acts of these games where it isn't uncommon for challenge to seriously ramp up and enemy stats get buffed up considerably. My question is, do you have any thoughts on how RPGs can communicate late game level expectations to the player to help players make more informed decisions during the early and mid game sections? Um, and there's more text, but I just want to address the general question. So I do think this is an issue. Different RPGs, uh, tabletop and CRPGs, uh, deal with progression in different ways. Some of them, you just have skill points and you can invest them and they go up at a one-to-one -one ratio infinitely. And so as time goes on, the ceiling is whatever the ceiling is. And it sometimes goes up linearly forever. And the floor is zero. Um, there are some other games where either the progression is blunted or slowed, um, meaning at a certain point, progressing a given skill becomes more expensive. So one, it becomes less appealing for players to invest in that skill because you're not getting as big of a return out of it. Uh, so that prompts the player to kind of maybe spread the points around, but also it makes the ceiling kind of come down relative to the floor, so to speak. Um, I mean, it doesn't really come down, but it, it doesn't skyrocket away at the same rate that it normally would. Um, and then there are games, for example, like 5th edition D&D, where you have proficiency in a skill, and that assumes kind of a set bonus on your roll. And it kind of means if you're good at a thing, it's going to kind of everything's going to keep getting better. And you don't have to do the thing where you're constantly monitoring skill points being spread across a wide variety of skills, which becomes very difficult over time. And yeah, you don't as a player know, because even if you could sort of estimate the theoretical max that a skill could be at, you don't know what the designers are doing for the difficulties they're setting. Um, so the first thing I would say is I do think that systems should have, ideally either they have some sort of slowing mechanic built in, like a weighted progression system I think can help a lot, um, or they should be very careful about how they set difficulties in the late game. Um, something that I try to have designers do is as the game goes on, instead of constantly making skill checks higher and higher and higher, is that the highest skill checks do go up, but that we keep basically checks from every level below that. So if in the beginning of the game, a high check might be against a difficulty of three, in the mid game, maybe eight in the late game, 15 or something like that. We retain, you know, a, even at, when a 15 is the high check, we retain a 12, a 10, an eight. Some things are just easy, even if it happens in the late game. And that accomplishes a couple of things. One, if a player is a generalist spreading their points around to a bunch of different skills, then they can still make a decent number of the checks. Uh, the second is that if a player invests in a skill late in the game, meaning, you know, like after 20 hours of play and 15 levels, they go, nah, I'm going to start taking lockpick. <laughs> There's still content that they can unlock um, with the skill that they've raised. Uh, otherwise, it'll feel like a waste to even invest in something that late in the game. So I do think that it's tricky. The other part of this also is remember that in most games, you will have the skill ranks, but also there are additional modifiers. In some games, that'll be an ability score or an attribute will give a derived bonus to a statistic and that can inflate the cap because those, those caps are also going up. Um, you can also have things like temporary buffs, spells, potions. Um, you can have pieces of equipment that give bonuses to skills or to the attributes that give bonuses to the skills. And that's where things really kind of go off the rails. So as the game progresses, not only does the ceiling on the direct input, the skill itself go up, but also all the secondary and tertiary inputs into those 
are not only getting unlocked, the player gets access to them, but they can also progress those higher as well. So the difficulty there for the designer is how do you even balance for that? Um, and again, this kind of comes down to being careful with how bonuses are given out, uh, potentially blunting progression so that it doesn't go up linearly, but it kind of tapers off. So that basically a min-maxer still feels satisfied that they've gotten some juice, <laughs> you know, out of like squeezing for everything they can get. It's nice to feel like they've optimized and gotten an additional bonus, but not balancing the game around, at least on normal difficulty, needing to make those super optimized investments in those. Um, I do think potentially that the, uh, the UI could do some things to show this is the range of skills and where it could be. They could also do something within the UI when you level up saying this is the max that a skill could be at this point in the game. Um, again, that doesn't necessarily tell the player what checks the designers are putting in, but it does let them understand this is how you're tracking relative to what the maximum of the skill could be at this point in the game. So it's a very difficult question actually, because uh, it's something that I personally, I don't necessarily think I'm very good at it, but it's, uh, it's something that I've had to deal with on every game that I've worked on that has vertical progression. So it is something certainly worth thinking about and testing. Um, and if you can do things either with the system design or with the UI to help the player understand how they're tracking and if they should invest more or if it's safe to put some points in something else, I think that would help players out. So that's my opinion on that. Thanks for watching. Bye.